I love this because I've been saying this. I think I was the first one to say this when NIL came out. Head coach, if you guys didn't know, Jonathan Smith came over from Oregon State, went to Michigan State, which I didn't think. If you would have asked me, would he have ever left his alma mater? I would have said no. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Brought Adam Chillis with him. And he had made a comment that said transfers to rivals will be common. And you can kind of see that trend right now. Yeah. Not only are people trying to not only figure out what they're going to do with NIL and that money's coming in and there's rules that are changing pretty much every single month when it comes to that and the collectives and all that other stuff. But the ones that are paying the most money are rival schools that know that there's talent there. Outside of the Quinshawn Jutkins of the world that went from Ole right. Miss to Ohio State, it's two State. totally different conferences. But I think what he means is not necessarily like a guy from Ohio State going to Michigan. I think he means like in a broader spectrum, like within the conference, like because there's no divisions anymore. Yeah. And people are yeah. usually going to play people. You can't really say that there is going to be a rivalry because there's no divisions anymore. It's just in the conference, you know, you got to play them. I did pull up something inter interesting from rivals.com though. 23 transfers happen within the same mm. conference from the top 100 rated players that were in the transfer portal in 2024 23 out of 100 that's pretty significant that is that's and it's only going it's only 25%. going to increase yeah that's you, only from what i pulled in the top 100 people like even five years ago i don't think I mean, at least i would have never imagined how this would have turned out like to have you know you take like travis or sorry not, not travis uh, no it is travis etn um going or is it trevor man e, the etn trevor. kid going from mm -hmm. uh yeah trevor going from, from from florida to georgia like i mean those two schools you know they have the rivalry they traditionally play in in jacksonville if i i, I believe so like yes you know that those are two schools who who really don't like each other and just have a player a star player for florida transfer like for one of his last yeah. years is like I, I don't think anyone would have imagined that like a few years ago even like jabbar muhammad going from washington to oregon both going from the pac-12 big 10 together like it's it's just the reality of, of of the transfer portal in the nil era yeah it is and not xavier look at oh who is it <sighs> love it went from missouri, missouri to georgia to georgia yeah like i'm a huge i like love it i do he, he didn't have the year i was hoping he did last year but still that that's huge and now he's gonna be the number one there in georgia well the 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 big time transfers i mean are just crazy i mean would you consider like caleb downs for example was the number one highest mm -hmm. rated player in the transfer portal going from alabama to ohio state I would say that that was probably a good move by him because of the the coaching change alone. He mm -hmm. gone somewhere where they're already established and got a ton of talent around them. Um, Evan Stewart going from Texas A and M to Oregon is is crazy. He fills in the spot yeah. of uh, Troy Franklin immediately. But some notable ones that you know were transferring, you know, within the conference. Dante Moore, for example, UCLA to Oregon. Oregon. They're going over to the Big Ten. Um, Walter Nolan. Walter Nolan. Yep. Lance Walter, Hurd. Yeah. The LSU to, to Tennessee. Uh, you got Caden Green, another offensive yeah. lineman guard from Oklahoma State or Oklahoma to Missouri. I mean, there's there's a bunch of Isaiah Bond, Alabama to Texas, getting prepared to get them ready for. <laughs> oh, they had for another the SEC. One too. Alabama. Trevor Etienne. We mentioned that one. Yeah. Um. And then there's there's still a couple more that are out there. Like, who knows what your boy Jacoby Matthews is gonna do? Oh yeah, I mean, the and that's that's one thing that the SEC is like. You know, they have that rule where in the spring, you, if you enter the portal in the spring window, you can't like you have to sit out a year if you want to transfer to a school in conference. And that was one of the things where it kind of limited what Matthews could do because he entered at the time he did, and you know, 
natural landing spot may have been like Alabama you know, they, with the departure of Caleb Downs, but he would have had to sit out a year, which I think it's good because the SEC is now taking uh, a step to try to avoid what Jonathan Smith described from becoming too much. But I mean, since the majority of the transfers happen in the fall window or immediately after a coach leaves, you know, it's going to be hard to stop. Yeah. 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 Torque, you're right. Brock Vandergrift and then the, the pass rusher from Georgia went to mm. Kentucky. Yep. Those are mm. two big ones. Um, I did, I did want to say, even though I totally agree with what Jonathan Smith is saying outside of what the transfer portals provide in, in conference, I do love seeing guys go from group of five or FCS schools up to the, mm, the power I'm five. Da- Daquan Finn going from Toledo to yes. Baylor. Everybody, I mean, Baylor's not great, but if Daquan Finn goes up there and makes Baylor a you know a contender that comes out of nowhere in the in the Big Twelve, which I don't think is going to happen, but if he does, then it only improves his stock. I mean, if he goes out there yeah. and just puts up big numbers and he's not the reason why they lose games, then that was a great move in general. So I look at that. Kate Caden Woolard. I, I talked about this kid last week when we were talking about Britton Venables and what he had brought into that defensive front. One of the best edge rushers that came out of the out of the MAC. He went and grabbed him and brought him to Oklahoma. Um, Colin Lacey from South Alabama going to Louisville. Like, CJ Daniels going from Liberty to LSU. I think that was a, an extremely good move for him. Grayson McCall. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what's, yeah, Grace, Grayson McCall. Well, we've been waiting on Grayson we, McCall's, Grayson McCall's worst enemy year. was his grades. Yeah. The, he he was his own but worst still, enemy. But still, another one. And yeah. even if you want to go back to like, you know, you look at Jared Verse, right? First round draft pick was incredible at Florida State. And he transferred in from Albany, was it? Albany, like, New York. Yep. I mean, that's, that's like, that's the upside of the transfer portal is it gives kids who thrive at these smaller schools to take that next step at a bigger program, not just for a chance to win a national championship, but an even better chance to be seen by NFL draft scouts exactly. to test themselves against the best in the country and then go be a first round pick. Yeah. I, I, Torque, you're talking about uh, Jamin Dumas Johnson. He was the edge out of Georgia that transferred up to uh, Kentucky. Probably my favorite one that filled the void immediately because they lost a, one of their star cornerbacks to the draft was Cameron Alexander from UTSA who's been they've been producing talent all over the place he goes from UTSA to Oregon immediately and helps fill in the spot that they that they were missing mm-hmm. man I can't wait for January 16th or July 16th to get here so we can play oh, the same if you got a PS5 add your oh, boy yeah. Yes, we do we doing a dynasty league. I they said you can have up to 30 teams. That deep dive. Yeah, Th- 32 dang. I think. 30, 32, 32 teams for 30, 30 seasons. seasons. Woo. Yeah. Pain man, why you got to remind me? Man, I love it. <laughs> <laughs>